One of the problems that a lot of these inventors have done, they think that they're going to do this in some stealth fashion, or the people who are usually the inventors and engineers really are not good with the strategic part of this. And I, on the other hand, couldn't engineer a, a, a toaster. But I'm very good at strategic leadership. And so that's what our team would do. We'd do the strategic leadership to get this out, and we would do it. Now, of course, that has to do with how far you're willing to go given a matrix of threat or inducements to buy out, sell out. And that's why we would not allow, if someone offered me $100 billion right now for 51% interest in this endeavor, I wouldn't say, I'd say absolutely not. Because the money people and the legal and business people almost never are going to stand down uh, a Section 181 order, you know, the Title 35 of the patent law that allows for a national security seizure, or one of these black ops guys threatening your life, or an inducement, you know. I mean, uh, there was one guy who approached me once and said, oh, you know, I can help put in around $5 million in seed money so these things can really get developed that you've discovered. Uh, and I'd say, yeah, great. And But he wanted, it was like, I, I call it vulture capital, not venture capital. And he wanted, you know, like 60, 70 percent interest in, and to have control this. I said, well, that's, I don't care if he had $5 billion, it wouldn't happen. And he was shocked. He, I, he said, why not? That's how it works. So that's not how this works. I said, well, let me answer your question with a question. You put five million into this, and it's not enough. I say ten million, and we get this the team put together, and we have half a dozen of these things, beta tested, ready to go, like you're talking about, distributed. Suddenly, someone surfaces who offers you, for your ten million dollar placement, a hundred billion dollars. What would you do? He said, oh, "I'm a businessman. I'd sell." I said, "No, you're a money whore." And there's a difference between a money whore and a bit. You've just sold out the future of Earth and a multi-trillion dollar industry, but more importantly, the future of the Earth and saving the Earth's environment and eliminating the whole way we're living and devouring the biosphere for a few pieces of silver. So anyone who would do such a thing for any amount of money or any level of threat is not a suitable board member in this effort. But here's the problem. Your average inventor, even your exceptional inventor, your exceptional investment team, your exceptional uh, legal team, they will not withstand that threat matrix. And it is a real one. And it has happened dozens of times. And this is why there has to be a firewall in terms of the controlling authority over this operation and those folks. Because they may say that, but when they start having Murder Incorporated coming after them, and I mean with the, with the, the, the you know, I, I, this and for hundred, the proof is we're still running these lights off of coal-fired power plants because this technology has been in some stage of discovery and development for the better part of a hundred years, certainly seventy-five years that we can prove, and we're still using gasoline and we're still using coal, and this is a completely and so if this was so simple to do, it'd been a fait accompli a long time ago. Yeah. The next level. And that's why, you know, I mean, I had a conversation with Ted Koppel about this a few years ago. He said, well, if you ever get one of these, he says, boy, you know, of course he's retired now, but he said, boy, it'd be great to have. I said, yeah, but you better have three backup satellites to Earth Star 1 or 2 or whatever you're using for your ABC News uh, because they're going to jam it. And that was before we had the whole first hour of the National Press Club event in 01 jammed by NSA or somebody as they were trying to broadcast it out of that building, first time in the history of the National Press Club, in the United States Capitol, jammed the whole first hour of it. There were so many millions of people trying to get online. By the way, they used up every T1 line in D.C. to do this. And uh, so I said, this is a tough nut to crack, so you better have a network built. And that's what I've been doing for the last decade or so, is building this network so that there are millions of people, literally, who follow our work. We get one of these things, and I don't care it, you know, how primitive it looks, and it may not be ready to be sold at Ace Hardware Store, but it's going to be known. You don't sit on this. And so it's counterintuitive. Most inventors and most technology teams say, we're going to keep this very secret. Oh, no, you don't. No, you know, you just can't because, you know, the secrecy is their game. We own the light and disclosure. They own the darkness of secrecy. And so let them have their little secret. But when you step out, and this is one of these counterintuitive things, because if you do what you're doing very publicly 
And this is what we're doing with the CE5 initiative as well. I mean, we report this stuff out and, you know, lots of people follow this. You've got a, you know, a billion watt spotlight shining on you with all these people knowing. Well, they're not going to move into that because these people work in this sort of furtive dark world. And this is the big mistake so many inventors have done. They have sat on these things too long and they have been too cute by twice. And what happens is that they're caught in this trap before hundreds of millions of people know about it and you have to have hundreds of millions of people know about it you cannot do this thing without the masses because your first vanguard of protection is the knowledge of the masses the knowledge of, of, of the public and the public needs to know but they'll also be your biggest defenders you know, can you imagine that if you actually had a technology that would free people from electric bills and from uh, pollution and gasoline bills, and it was known by hundreds of millions of people through a satellite broadcast and everything else, I and mean, with all kinds of strategies we have that I don't want to go into. But if you do that, well, I mean, if there was an, a covert or overt attempt to suppress that, A, it would be known, B, you'd have a, a million people march on Washington and burn the city down. It won't happen. So that's why Disclosure Project happened. I mean, we ramped this thing up so that there were millions, you know, 10, 15 million people listening about it on Coast to Coast AM and, and other, me not just that, but other media outlets, that this was going to happen. So when it happened, it was like, whew. And to this day, not a single one of these people who testified have even gotten a phone call telling them to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Not one. Not a single one. In fact, uh, uh, Colonel Arneson, who was with us in Palm Springs, said this publicly to our group. Uh, he's one of our witnesses who was with the Strategic Air Command when the, the Maelstrom and the nuclear uh, missiles were shut down. And they said, uh, he said that he has never gotten any uh, negative repercussions from having come forward with his information or the documents pertaining to it. And that's true. That is absolutely none of us have. But it's, and it's not an accident. This was planned. This was years and years and years of planning. And so that's the kind of umbrella and strategy we want to put around the technology. So it actually survives the launch. Because, uh, and, and really you think about it, 99.9999999% of the people on earth do not own oil fields or coal companies or power companies. And they'd be thrilled to have this knowledge. And it would be such a blossom of hope springing throughout the world. It'd be a springtime that they would realize that, well, even if it's in a couple more years to get it to a 20 kilowatt or 100 kilowatt system, to know that this is real, it's been tested by mainstream uh, scientists, it's been proven, it's been replicated, it's reproducible. This would be such a wonderful thing in a world where there's really so much hopelessness.